Hey guys, today we are going to look at rational exponents. We are going to answer the question, how do I convert between rational exponents and radical form? So before we talk about all rational exponents, let's look at one really common one that you should have memorized. The rest of them, you can use this pattern, but this one over here is a really common one. So try and memorize it. The square root is the same thing as the one half power. And let's look at why. So if we have 25 to the 1 half times 25 to the 1 half, we have the same base. So we can use the product rule and add those exponents. So this would be equivalent to 25 to the 1 half plus 1 half. And 1 half plus 1 half is 1. So it becomes 25 to the 1 or 25. So if what I said is true, one half power is the same thing as the square root. If I change those one half powers into square roots, then I should get the same thing. So the square root of 25 times the square root of 25 is the same thing as 25 to the one half times 25 to the one half. Well, 25, the square root of 25 is five. So this equals five times five, which is 25. So either way that we look at it, we get 25. So square root, same thing as one half power. Let's kind of think about how this relates to all rational exponents. So like we just looked at over here, all of your exponent laws are still gonna apply to non-integer or rational exponents. Rational exponents can be written as radicals where the denominator is the root and the number is the exponent of the number under the radical or the radicand. So that is kind of confusing with words. It looks, it's a little bit more easier to me to understand it when we look at the math of it. So the denominator is the root and then the numerator is the exponent. So if you think about what we just did with 25 to the one half, The root was two, which makes sense. It was the square root. What times itself equaled 25, and then it was a one exponent. So all we're gonna do right now is just practice rewriting these numbers in radical form. So the numerator is the new exponent, and then the denominator is the root. So r to the one third, let's set up our radical symbol with r, one is the exponent and then third is the root. And then we can just simplify that a little bit further. We don't need that one exponent. It's more simplified as just r and it will put the third root. So r to the one third is the same thing as the third root of r. Okay, then let's rewrite this one in radical form, 10x to the one half. The 10 is not being raised to the one half power. It is only the x. And we talked about how the one half power is the same thing as the square root. So this is just 10 square root of x. Okay, then this one right here, y to the two thirds. I'm going to set up my radical with y. The exponent is the numerator, so the exponent will be two. And then the root is the denominator, so the root is three. Okay, now we're gonna go the other way. We're gonna write in rational form. So if they don't tell us the root, that's an implied square root, so two. And then they don't tell us the exponent, so that's an implied one. And I need to put the eight P in parentheses because it was all of eight P that was under the radical. If I don't put the parentheses, when I write my exponent, it'll just look like the P was under the radical, but that was not the case. So put the eight P in parentheses. And then since it was a radical, we're gonna have a fraction exponent. Our numerator is the exponent, so the numerator is one, and the denominator is the root, so the denominator is two. So that's how you would write that in rational form. Okay, number five, I'm gonna put 16 and then x. And now I will put the exponent just with the x since that is all that was under the radical. The x doesn't have an exponent, so it's implied one, and then the root was three. So the rational 
exponent would be 1, since that was the exponent, over 3. Okay, and then number 6, I just have x, and then it was in radical form, so I'm going to have a rational exponent. The exponent was 5, so that's our new numerator, and the root was 4, so that's our new denominator. Okay, then 7 through 9, we're going to evaluate these without a calculator. So, cubed root of 27. That is asking what number times itself three times is 27. Another way to write it out would be what times what times what, that's the same number, is 27. And it would be 3. 3 to the third is 27. So 3 is your answer here. The cubed root of 27 is 3 because 3 to the third is 27. Okay, number eight is also asking for a cubed root because if we wrote this in radical form, it would end up being the cubed root of eight to the one or just the cubed root of eight. So same thing, what number times itself three times is eight. So what times what times what equals eight? And it would be two. Two times two is four times two is eight. Two to the third is eight. So two is the cubed root of eight. Or you could think of it as eight to the one third is two. Okay, and then last one, 64 to the two thirds power. They want us to evaluate this without a calculator. So I'm going to rewrite this in radical form. It's a little bit easier for me to think of it that way. So we're trying to find the third root of 64 squared. And I'm going to use my calculator not to type this in, but to help me guess and check. So first thing I'm going to do is 64 squared and it's 4,096. So I'm really trying to find the third root of 4,096. So I'm trying to find what number times itself three times equals 4,096. So I'm just gonna start guessing and checking. I'm gonna start with 12. I'm gonna see if 12 times 12 times 12 is 4,096. Looks like I need to go higher. I'm gonna try 14. Still not big enough, let's try 16. And it looks like 16 is it. So 64 to the 2 thirds is equivalent to 16. Okay, now we are just going to practice simplifying some expressions with rational exponents. And our exponent rules will still apply. So I'm going to do the power rule here. I'm going to distribute this out. So 100 to the 1 half is the same thing as the square root of 100. And then x to the 16th to the 1 half, I do 16 times 1 half, which is 8. And then the square root of 100 is 10. So this becomes 10x to the 8th. Okay, number 11 I am multiplying these, so I'm going to use the product rule. I'm going to add the exponents. Um, but first, let's multiply the numbers. This would be 18 times the invisible 1, which is 18. And then this would be x to the 1 third times x to the 2 thirds. So x to the 1 third plus 2 thirds. And 1 third plus 2 thirds is 1. So this just becomes 18x to the 1 or 18x. Okay, last one, I am multiplying two things, but I need to distribute the exponent first. So x to the eighth to the third would be x to the 24th. And then 16 to the one half, that's like the square root of 16, which is four. And then x to the eighth to the one half is x to the fourth. 
And now I'm just gonna simplify this a little bit further, put the coefficient out in front, and then x to the 24th times x to the fourth, I add those exponents and I get x to the 28th. 